Douglas Powell from the Carnegie uh, Endowment for International Peace. Thank you very much for being on WBC TV. Um, you've got long experience of uh, American politics, including in government. What do you think of the, so you've just been on a panel about North Korea. What do you feel is the future of the negotiations, of the Trump-style negotiations? Well, I think the outcome is likely to be a win-win-win um, uh, for the principal personalities involved. Maybe not for the governments, but the Chinese are in a much better position today than they were a year ago because Trump has opened doors for them. The North Koreans have pocketed the nuclear and missile capabilities and they're now going out into the world with a begging bowl and maybe more. Uh, the South Koreans leader has a kind of a, a view which is supported by only a minority in South Korea, which is intense efforts to reunify with North Korea. Which is like Kim Dae-jung uh, yes. policy, Although sunshine in, in, policy. Uh, uh, President Moon is uh, from a North Korean family and has had a long connection yeah. with efforts to uh, reduce barriers and try to reunify the Korean Peninsula, something not shared by younger generation or by a 60 or so percent of the population to tend to be more conservative. And then the fourth is Mr. Trump, who last year posed as the tough guy and this year is posing as a peacemaker and by all the polls so far, yeah. it's working. He's, people think he actually has brought the Nobel Prize. But if you to... look at the Singapore Declaration, um, it seems to me that actually the great winner is Kim. Well, in that particular negotiation, there's no question. He, he took it all. Uh, Trump got nothing for that visit except a change in his own personal reputation from warmonger to peacemaker. And that's been good for him, in his view. Now, whether it's good for him in two months or a year, probably it'll change. So, final question. Not your prognosis. What do you think is going to happen? On the peninsula? Yeah. Well, North Korea will enter the club of the nuclear power nations, and uh, proliferation will have been extended to North Korea. By, in fact, and it will not be done in name. It'll be done in de facto. But they will be, uh, remain in nuclear presence. The outcome for the world is you'll have a nuclear-armed North Korea sitting alongside an allied power with the U.S. The U.S. and North South Korea will argue because the North is nuclear, we need the alliance there. Both North Korea and South Korea want the U.S. on the peninsula because they're afraid of China. And Japan will do the same. Japan will still be within the penumbra of the threat from North Korea. And they'll be unhappy about that because the U.S. will not have resolved it. But they have no option not to be with the U.S. on an alliance. So everybody's accepting a cup half full in this uh, equation, with the exception of North Korea, which has got a full cup. And so the challenge for Donald Trump will be somehow to claim victory for his tactics. Well, he, he seems to do that every time. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be a problem. Douglas Fowler, thank you very much for being on WPC TV. Thank Pleasure you. Pleasure to be with you.